Hello, I'm back. Um, so I wanted, we just did a video about um, uh, picking and down strokes and just getting a nice solid rest stroke with a down stroke. So if you haven't watched that or you don't know what I mean by, um, by a rest stroke or a, or a forward slant, um, just go back and, and just check that video out first. So assuming that you have watched that and you know what I'm talking about, everything we do now is going to be um, a, a rest stroke with that, with that angle here and the forward offset. And we're gonna focus on playing through both strings at the same time. So it doesn't sound like Don't get upset. Don't freak out if that's what it does sound like. We're just going to work on that. We've got um, a nice relaxed shape here, and um, and we're not resting back here on the bridge of the strings. We've got a bit of space. Yeah, and and that picking motion actually comes from the forearm. It's not coming from here because this is a small muscle group that'll that'll wear out quickly. It's not even coming from that even though you might see people do that, um, in the long run, it's much more efficient if we learn this from the start, rotation of the forearm. And it's not elbow. You'll see some people doing tremolo and it's, it's you know, they've got this really, oh, um, you know, like the window wipers, I call it. It's not that. It's, it's this, here's a great thing to do. It's a great sort of, I'm really exaggerating the movement. Well, I would never bring the pick up that far, but I'm just getting used to the idea of twisting a doorknob, right? Like not a lever, but an actual round doorknob. <laughs> you know, that's how you that's how you open a, a door. And that's that's um, if you happen to be. I'm not a drum drummer, right? But I, I, I my understanding is you know, a snare drummer doing a, a roll. You know, that, that starts off as a big movement. And then as they get to the, the fast movement, or the fast roll, sorry, the movement gets smaller and smaller, and really efficient. And it's this forearm thing happening, which, you know, the drum sticks out here. They're not like, they're not doing it out of tension. They're doing it out of relaxation and training this to be loose and relaxed and rotate from here. So for us, you know, we're not doing tremolo today. We're doing down strokes, but the motion is from the forearm, even though it might look like it might look like the wrist, but the motion is the forearm. And the pick is going from like I'm on the string like this, I'm touching the string with my downward pick and slight forward orientation, but I'm going from here to here. I'm not doing this, I'm not going through any big motion. It's just like that. Down, down, so here. Sorry. Okay, so enough about that. Let's let's do the warm up. So I'm going to go from. It's good to know your strings. G D A E G D A E. So the first thing I'm going to do is this. G D G. Do it again. G D G. Then we go G A G. sure that every one of these is a rest stroke then G E G I go slower and I'm listening to the sound G and again G A G G A didn't sing it right G have to sing it but I like to do it. G. I'm not gonna get that high G this morning. G. Okay so the idea with that is we're, we're always we're starting on a G going to the next string and always coming back so our hand is getting used to moving away let's say call G home right because we're always coming back here it's getting used to going away from home and coming back to home and you know should look you should be looking at the pick right now right but eventually
eventually, we've got a nice, you know, relaxed hand and we're, we're keeping our arm in position here. Eventually, we build, we build up, you know, eyes in our pick. You know, so <laughs> proprioception means we, we know where, where, where our body is in space. Um, so we're, we're building up that, that feeling of, I know, I know where home is, it's G, and I know what it feels like to reach out to E. And they're all rest strokes, and they're all down strokes. And I'll do it again. G, D, G, do that with me again. G, D, G, G, A, G. Eventually, your, pick, your picking hand will get used to finding that string that you're after without having to look because you might be looking at your left hand or you might be looking at um, a chart, you might be reading the music or you might be looking at you know, some cute person in the audience or what you, <laughs> you might not be looking at your right hand. Hopefully we're not looking at our right hand for too long. You know, we, we, we get this set up so it can find its way. Um, I was going to say, um, um, so there's, there's lots we can do with this, but I would say for now, let's just do this, this leapfrog that I call it, or if you're talking about classical music, it's a pedal point, pedal time where you've got one note happening all the time. Now, so we were going G, D, I was going to say, I remembered, um, it's good to say the names of the strings. Program this in by, by repeating it, not just by thinking I'm going G, D, D, but by saying it out loud or saying it in your head, but like by identifying the string that you're on. We're doing a bit of multitasking here. We're really focusing on our right hand, but um, G, D, by saying the name of the string, and I do like saying it, I do like singing it, um, it reinforces. It's another le level of, of, of information coming in and sticking, hopefully. So, um, yeah, it's really good to, 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 to name your notes that you're playing. Um, and then it just becomes second nature, you know, to think, what string is that? Because you, you're naming them all the time. Um, so, G, D, G, G, A, G, G, E, G. Let's do something where we don't repeat. We don't do it in lots of three. I just go G, D. G, A, G, I hope you can see that, G, E, I'll come in a bit closer, G, D, G, A, that wasn't very clean, G, E, again, G, D, G, A, G. Are you saying it out loud? Let's slow it down. G, D, G. A, G, ready, again, G, D, G, A, D, E, G, D, G, A, G, E, E, <laughs> um, okay, so that's something that you can do on your own, um, so you've got the in lots of threes, G, D, G, always coming back to G, G, A, G, G, D, G, and then in twos, G, D, G, A, G, D. Um, and I'm sure you'll think of variations, which is great. I encourage you to come up with your own little patterns. One that comes to mind to me, there's a couple, you know, if you've gone G, D, G, A, G, you just keep coming back the way you the way you went up, you go back down G D upside down G D G A G D, G D G D And then the other one um, is is that comes to mind is is starting on the E string, right? Now that the funny thing here is there's no no there's no string above it to or I should say below it to, to rest on. So you just have to be aware of what what that distance is when you are going from say A to E. 
and replicating that here and sort of stopping yourself. So there's nothing to stop you. So you've got to control that movement. We don't want to end up out there when we do our E string. We just go, you know, the same distance as it is from the A to the E string. We just imagine that stopping point. We stop here. Efficiency is being relaxed. Also, good technique is being relaxed and and minimizing um, you know, extraneous energy or, or movement, distance. So there's no need to come out here, so we're just gonna stay here. So okay, so this is the first E, A, but all downstrokes still. E, A, E. E, A, E. Now, what's it gonna be? <laughs> yeah, E, D, E. E, D, E. E, D. And what's the last one gonna be? What's that? E, G, E, well done. E, G. I don't know how you put up with me. Okay, so there's lots you can do with that. This is 11 minutes, so I'm gonna stop it. Um, but these are good um, things to think about um, just while we're getting used to holding the pick. Maybe you already play with the pick, but maybe you haven't thought about it like in this way. Um, relax, everything's relaxed. Maybe write that somewhere on a piece of paper or, or, or on your music stand or, or somewhere, wherever you're playing, wherever you're practicing, just write somewhere to relax. And that, that's this, right? But it's also this. You know, we, we want to be relaxed. It's also how we sit. Sometimes you'll find that, you know, your foot's wrapped around your chair and you're not even aware that, you know, you're holding tension in your foot. So if you notice it, just just breathe in and and, um, and sit nice and, and comfortably, but without, just look for those little bits of tension because it will come out in your playing. I've had it <laughs> over the years, you know, like, why is my neck so sore? Or why are my fingers so sore? Really, it's my fingers. Tension for me comes out in my hands, and and um, quite often it's because my neck has been like this. I've been practicing, you know, and and, and over you know half an hour, you're like, oh geez, <laughs> that's not so great, and my, my fingers are sore. So relax, write it down somewhere on your stand. Um, okay, hope this helps. Let me know if um, if there's something that you'd like to talk about a bit more. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, and thanks for playing mandolin. We we need more of us out there. Um, okay, bye.